we happen to be talking about this beautiful work that is worship, this beautiful relationship that is worship between us and the divine, this beautiful way of mutual adoration between us and us, <laughs> right? This way of being with people that changes us and being with the divine essence as she changes us. What if God worships me? Can you say that with me? What if God worships me? Now, you don't have to say it if you feel uncomfortable because <laughs> it can feel a little uncomfortable, right? Especially when we don't really understand and live into who God has called us to be and what God is to us and has called us to be to God. A God who worships me is quite the statement. I know, but follow me. Now, I get it. We've started to worship a very big, heteronormative white Jesus. Worship has become so God-centered that it risks the subjective colliding of our own things, our biases, etc. And often takes from the purity of God's mutual affection for us. What if worship is the confidence that is spoken to us by God? What if worship is God in the garden that notices them even when they try to hide? What if worship is Genesis 3 and 8 that says, when God says, where are you? And who told you that you were naked? Who told you that there was a flaw in your beauty? The God who meets us and keeps confirming that who we are is good enough. What if that's worship? What if you not worshiping didn't stop God from worshiping you? Well, this video has some interesting things to say. First off, God is not a she. There's nowhere in scripture that the feminine is used to describe God. He's always referenced in the masculine. The second thing is, the only person that we are to worship as believers is God. The first commandment states that we shall have no other gods before him, and that includes us. God doesn't worship us, as Romans 1.25 tells us, when we're admonished not to exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship the created. We're not to do that. So what we see here is we see what false teachers do. They reference scripture. They twist it according to their own desires. You need to be discerning. Don't be fooled by this idea. It may sound good. It may sound intriguing, but it is not sound doctrine. It's a lie. God bless you. For more content like today's podcast, click right here. For sermons, click right here. And again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Have a blessed day.